All right, here with Matt Sanchez, head of uh, Camel City Elite Meet 2016. I guess, you know, how, how was your break? We haven't seen you since uh, Beijing. How did you do over the winter? It was good, yeah. It was a pretty consistent uh, block I got of training. Um, been fortunate enough to uh, get some solid workouts in and uh, didn't have any major setbacks, so probably one of the more consistent falls in base training that I've had in a long time. So That's good. Were you in Portland, or did you go anywhere for altitude? Uh, nowhere for altitude. I stayed in Portland um, the majority of the time, but made some trips back east uh, for my birthday for a couple weeks, and then uh, spent Christmas in Hawaii, which is really nice get a chance to get out of the, the rain. But, um, yeah, for the most part, just in Portland. Great. Um, I mean, when you look back at last year, how do you assess it? Because, you know, I would say you had probably one of the best seasons by 1,500-meter American, you know, in recent memory. But then the World Championships, which have been your strong suit the years before, it was your lowest finish. So how, how do you assess that? Yeah, yeah it, it obviously, like, kind of sucks to have, like, the worst um, championship placing at the, as the last race of pretty much the season. Um, but, you know, you take that race away, although that's the most important race of the year. I mean, it was – had the best indoor season I've ever had. Um, lost one race, you know, set some um, goals of winning the Milrose Mile, Wanna Make a Mile, which I did, uh, won USA indoors. Um, and just kind of carried that momentum out to the outdoor season and set some more personal bests in the eight and the 15. Um, and so, yeah, it was pretty, you know, tough to end on a note where like, you know, I knew that I was in probably one of the best shape of my life, but didn't really reflect that in terms of my, uh, my placing at the World Championships. But nonetheless, I was very pleased with, you know, the, uh, the year as a whole. And, um, yeah, pretty confident kind of going forward. Um, why do you think, you know, you had been at a high level. You already won two U.S. championships before last year. But, you know, last year it all came together, especially in the Diamond League circuit. Why do you think you made such a leap last year? Uh, I think, you know, it was just kind of like progression. I mean, I don't think it was like a huge leap. I... Back in 2012, I, I finished uh, fourth and third at a couple Diamond League races after the Olympics. And um, I think it was just, you know, me just kind of 26 years old now, you know, kind of maturing into my, my own. And it's pretty much now or never, you know, I'm in best years, best shape of my life. Um, and so it just kind of makes sense that I continue to work my way closer to these, uh, these top three finishes at Diamond League. Um, I finished two times in the top, in the top three. And so... Hopefully next year I could, you know, kind of work my way into three, four more, you know, races and uh, just kind of, yeah, continue solidifying myself as one of the top in the world um, at these races. Yeah. I remember when I spoke to you after Beijing, you didn't seem that down on your performance because the guys who beat you were all, you know, 328, 329 guys, really studs in the sport. And I'm wondering, you know, do you think that you can get to a level this year where you're beating them and you're running with them when they're at their absolute best? Yeah, certainly, of course. Um, I mean, there's some things, you know, uh, you know, I sat down with my coaches and we discussed about uh, little tiny things that we could fix, um, you know, going into this Olympic year. And yeah, I mean, I've always believed in our program and um, obviously trust everything that we have set in stone for me about getting up to where I ultimately want to get is obviously the number one spot. And uh, I mean, it's going to take obviously um, an incredible race out of me, but at the same time, you know, um, I finished fourth at the last Olympic champion. I mean, I've been in this position to, to medal, and I've also been in the position to, to be Redox. I know what it takes, and I understand that, you know, just because I had, you know, maybe a, a disappointing finish doesn't mean that, you know, there's no hope. You know, I, I know that once you get to these finals, anything can happen. You know, even if you are a 329 guy, like you said, you know, it doesn't mean that you're going to be um, the top guy on that day. And so... It just kind of panned out that way where, you know, everyone that beat me did have faster PRs, and, and that's kind of part of the reason why I wasn't quite as down on it. But also, I think the main thing for me was I raced it the way I wanted to race. It wasn't yeah. like I didn't put myself in it. You know, I was in the thick of things all the way through until about 300 to go. Um, and so, yeah, I just wasn't, you know, the top three best guys in that on that day. Sure. I mean, there are, yeah, there are a lot of guys, 328, 329, but then there's Kip Rock, you know, and he's kind of a... It's been on a different level the last few years. I mean, do you do you think he's beatable? Do you think you can really get to a level where you're beating this guy at 326? He's won, you know, 15, 13, 11, all these world titles and stuff like that. So, I mean, with his PRs, I mean, obviously the odds are against you, but, I mean, that's why we race the race. You know, I mean, the 15 is such a an exciting event because you just don't know. You know, I mean, if you look back um, throughout the years, there's so many guys in the top three that have been interchangeable throughout all the world championships and Olympics. Um, 
And, you know, I mean, yeah, he's run 326, but, um, you know, you don't know. You could get it hurt. You know what I mean? It's, 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 there's all these different variables. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, you just got to really not look at those guys and just kind of continue doing, you know, you. You just got to, you know, know what you need to work on. And that's what I've been doing. You know, I'm not really paying attention of, you know, pretty much – this top seven guys that beat me at Worlds and, and looking through their credentials and what they did, it's, it's more like, how can I get better? Sure. Um, what do I need to do? You know, I finished fourth at 2012 Olympics and I had knee surgery that spring. You know, I missed a good six weeks of training where I was just doing absolutely nothing. I mean, mentally, I'm like, as long as I just put some eight to 10 mile runs in those days, I had zeros. Why can't I be a medal contender this sure. year? You know, and so it's just working on me being healthy, me um, continuing to progress and build on the year I had last year. So you said you, you know, you talked to your coaches and maybe change a couple small things. What, what are those things? What do you see as tweaking a little bit from the last couple of years? Uh, you know, well, not really as the last couple of years. Just more like tweaking. Uh, what, what could we have done a little differently at the World Championships last year? And that was to me. Um, I felt a little, a little more tired. I mean, you know, at the end of Beijing, I only raced fifth Ave. I, I didn't go and run any more track races. I was you know, happy for the season to be done. And, you know, whereas in the previous um, World Championships and Olympics, I've always raced a few races after. Mm -hmm. And so I think I was a little burnt out um, just mentally and physically. And so um, I might have been a little, I don't want to say like too ready too soon, but I think uh, just the way I was peaked a little bit, um, kind of with the Olympics being a little bit earlier than Beijing, I think that'll help a lot this year as well. So yeah. um, things like that, you know, it's nothing huge, nothing major. Um, but certainly I wasn't on my A plus game that day. Um, but nonetheless, I still competed very hard and ran the way I wanted to, like I said. And um, it's good to know that I could still come out of that finishing eighth where sure. I might not have been firing on all cylinders. So does that mean maybe doing less intense work or maybe not doing as intense workouts as early in the season? Or does that mean maybe doing one fewer Diamond League race or... Yeah, how would you? I mean, the change? Olympics are a couple of weeks earlier than Beijing. I mean, that will help. I mean, it's not again. It's not like we need to change a whole lot, right. you know. I mean, um, I think it's just like looking at um, the year as as a collective. Like we're, you know, indoors. I did a lot of racing, you know, and this year um, I think we're gonna back off a little bit of that. Um, not racing every weekend where I did last year, um, and yeah, I think I'll have more of a focus on the Olympics this year. Whereas last year, you know, I was kind of really focusing hard on the U.S. Uh, championships and then looking to, to Beijing because I think it was like two months. Yeah, uh, it was it was a right. long time after. And so this year you have the trials, and then I think about a month later you have the Olympics um, pretty much getting going. So I think that will help. Yeah, I mean, would you rather they have it as close to the Olympics as possible for, in terms of a championship date for the USA? Yeah, I, I probably prefer that. Yeah. Um, I mean, when you have the U.S. championships and as – we've shown we had three guys that are finalists um it's such a you know a hard you know task just to make that team i mean once you make that team you could be a medal contender and so that being said you can't really overlook it and you know when you have beijing that's two weeks or two months later it's kind of like you're peaking twice you know right. what i mean it's kind of hard to really gear up and make sure you're on and then you're like all right well now we're gonna go back to some racing and um and so yeah it just makes it more difficult whereas you can kind of have a nice long build up going into the Olympics, whereas you could still be ready a month before because it's close. Yeah. What's your uh, goal for tomorrow's race? Uh, just get a good hard effort in. Um, I think, you know, this is technically this is kind of my first race this season. I, I did a 3K a couple weeks ago, but it was just Pablo and I in it, and he just paced me for the first mile, so was in a competitive um, atmosphere. And so tomorrow I have Corey Leslie in there. Pablo's um, going to be racing as well and a few really other good guys. So um, just kind of go in, get the win as the first goal, and then um, really get after it. You know, I don't want to sit back and, and let it be a kicker's race. You know, I want to make sure that we're at least under four minutes for the mile and go with the rabbits of whatever they end up going with. And, uh, yeah, just come away with it, um, feeling good going into the next race. And what do you, what's your schedule like for the rest of the indoor season? I'm going to do a 3K next weekend um, in Portland. And so, you know, tomorrow having anything under four minutes is going to make that first mile on the 3K. I feel obviously a little more comfortable. And some of the Oregon Track Club guys are going to come up for that, so that should be a good race. Yeah. And then take two weeks off, and then I'll have the Middle West Games um, February 20th, and then uh, the U.S. Championships. So um, that's as of right now. You know, anything could change with Alberto. And, uh, yeah, just don't know. Still 1,500 at the USA, so, yeah? No, I, I – up in the air, it could be three, could be 15. Um, I don't think we've really made a decision yet. We're going to 
probably decide after all the main racing is done, probably after Milrose, and see what's the best for me to medal at World Championships. Gotcha. Um, came out yesterday that, you know, one of your teammates, Galen Rupp, going to be running the Olympic Marathon Trials. I guess, how, how long had you known that, and uh, what are your thoughts about his chances? Uh, in terms of how long have I known, um, probably like maybe a week before he announced it, and I did a workout with him in, in Alberta and him discussed it, but I mean, I probably always had a hunch that, you know, he would, but honestly, like I never really asked him. Um, I was, you know, obviously just kind of figuring out, doing, you know, things I need to do with me, and I wasn't really training with him that much, but I'm not surprised that he's doing it. I mean, you know, he's shown he's done great half marathons over the last few years, and uh, I'm sure he'll do great at the Olympic Trials. I mean, has he been work? Do you guys normally work out a lot during this together during this time of year? Has it been more? Or has it been less than in previous years? Are you guys doing the same sort of workouts? Uh, every year is different. Last year he got sick, and so we didn't work out quite as much during the indoor season. But um, you know, we're on different schedules. You know, um, if it works out well that I have like a, a strength session and he's got one within a couple of days of me, we'll you know put it together on the on the schedule. But um, but yeah, I don't. I don't think we do every single workout together. We probably maybe one every ten days um, work out together. So, gotcha. I mean, his tempos are. Yeah, you know, I'm not going to be doing any of that. So. Yeah, um, I've seen you know your pretty active Twitter presence. Been tweeting about football the last couple of weeks. Uh, do you have a Super Bowl pick and defend your pick? Uh, I mean the Panthers. I mean, I think everyone knows they're already a heavy favorite, and uh, I mean. It's there as a lose. If if they still lost the Broncos, I would still say that the best team didn't win that day. I think I think the Panthers are the best team. I mean, um, I think their record shows it, and uh, everyone's kind of down them all year, and they've continued to prove them wrong. And they're an exciting team to watch. You know, I mean, Peyton Manning is just kind of like your classic, you know, Joe Football kind of guy, and I feel like Cam Newton is kind of like this young, um, yeah, exciting, dynamic player that the NFL really hasn't seen. Um, Ever so, cool. it should be fun. Do you have a team that you support? The Ravens. Uh, yeah, born and raised in Maryland, so I've always been a Ravens fan. But I mean, quite honestly, I'm just a bandwagoner. You know, it's like right now I'm like, you know, Cam Newton's fun to watch. I'm a Panthers fan, but if every team played each other, I'd be rooting for the Ravens for sure. But um, sure. when the Ravens kind of knocked out, I started picking some teams here and there. So if I have some friends that are like, you know, Giants fans, I'll choose for the Giants. Some friends that are Redskins fans, I'll choose for them. So. So you're gonna be dabbing tomorrow if you win. I will be dabbing tomorrow if I win. <laughs> okay. All right. You got the exclusive on that round.